In these hills in central Bulgaria, you can hear thousands of voices for just three days every five years. Down in the small town of Koprivstice, Bulgarians gather to celebrate one of Europe's richest folk cultures. Despite its inaccessibility, 14,000 amateur performers, men, women and children, make the journey here to share their passion. They bring with them songs, dances and dramatic rituals which their ancestors have kept alive through the centuries. The event also attracts a surprising number of visitors, drawn from all over the world, to watch and listen. For 500 years, Bulgarians lived as a suppressed culture under Turkish rule. After liberation in 1878, a national revival of folklore began, celebrating a cultural identity kept alive against all odds. Since their release from communism in 1989, Bulgarians are experiencing a new wave of cultural unity. With so much of the Balkans ethnically divided, they guard and nurture their secret treasure.
Reacting against empty promises of economic progress, many young people from Bulgaria are keen to learn the songs and dances of their ancestors, and it's largely their enthusiasm that brings the festival its vitality. The origins of Bulgarian folk culture predate Christianity. The creatures in this ritual wear extraordinary masks, animal skins and huge cowbells around the waist. The higher they jump, the taller will be the wheat that year. The cookery, as they are called, originated in the cult of Dionysus, the Greek god of fertility. The relationship between nature and man is central to Bulgarian folklore. Ancient rituals originating in man's first attempts to shape his consciousness are performed here. Traditional props and food are used to help tell stories of village life and human nature, with improvised accompaniments. These costumes were made by the girl dancers, who are from the Rodope Mountains in the south. Costumes are usually made at home, based on the traditional designs of the village. The girls are singing one of the region's most popular folk songs, which will be performed by many other groups here. Like all Bulgarian rituals, the cookery marks an important festival on the agricultural calendar. Crops. The young people wearing these enormous heavy costumes provide the energy and enthusiasm necessary to perform. The ritual originally had a central pagan king character, but following the introduction of Christianity in 865, he began to be replaced by an orthodox Christian priest. At the end of each year, the universal balance is disturbed, so the cookery characters will protect the crops by chasing away the old year and evil spirits, reorganizing the world order, turning chaos into cosmos.
doesn't understand why I love Bulgaria. She doesn't understand why I want to come here. She doesn't understand why I spend so much time learning the songs and the dances. She just says to me, why Bulgaria? In the village of Dren, a hundred kilometers south of Sofia, the ancient folk art and traditions are still being handed down through the generations. Maria Gerbeva has dedicated her life to preserving her culture and has taken hundreds of performers to Koprivstitsa over the last 20 years. Когато срещнах Мария, това беше в училище. Бяхме трети клас и тя ни пое като клас на ръководител и успя да ни покаже, така да ни подведе, да я възприемаме не само като учител, като преподавател, ами като човек. Тя излъчва... Излъчването й е на спокоен човек, на човек, който е постигнал мир в себе си. Успя и на някой от нас да го даде това нещо. Since the late 1970s, there has been renewed interest in folklore and the cultural center has become a focus for the whole village. Maria spends much of her time here nurturing the young talent. <coughs> и винаги ще се придържам към това, че семейството е това, което дава всичко на човек. И аз мисля, че за да се занимавам с фолклор, предимно съм предопределена още с раждането си. Защото майка ми казваше, че когато съм се родила, на другия било клепало за вечерна литургия, на други ден било благовец, благовещение. In Maria's village, the young girls are performing the widely practiced fertility ritual, Lazarovania. It takes place on St. Lazarus's day and celebrates the coming of spring. The girls go from house to house, bearing symbolic gifts for the owners. Now is the exchange of spring gifts, the girls presenting flowers to the mistress of the house. Thanks to Maria's teaching, they seem to know the details better than their hostess. They wish her good health and a rich harvest. In return, she sprinkles them with water and basil. She'll also present them with eggs, all taken very seriously by both old and young. In the past, those who didn't participate were believed to return after death 
as demons. When Maria has gone, the survival of Lazaru of Anya here will depend on the girls sharing it with their own children. These girls have been rehearsing for three or four years in preparation for Koprivštica. They're the youngest of three groups representing the village and it's a very important day for them though they are one of hundreds of groups of young performers. И така, като отидохме и видяхме едно безкрайно море от шарени неща. И тук е страда по-нататък, така е страда нещо много красиво. И когато излязваха моите деца, аз не бъдам, просто плаках. The adults of the village are rehearsing the complex wedding ritual, portraying transition and creation as a young couple bring their two families together, forming a new clan for the future. It's performed by many groups at the festival and must be carefully worked out if it's to translate to stage. Almost 50% of Bulgarians still work on the land and their musical tradition has been born out of a life of extremes of hard work, misery and happiness. <laughs> In many villages, women still do much of the hard agricultural work, since their men often work away for long periods. Bulgarians say the songs from the Rodop region rise and fall harmoniously, like the mountains where they live and work, in small, isolated communities.
Rituals, loaves of bread are often used to symbolize the continuity of life. So, it seems, is the alcohol. This group are performing in mock Turkish style, playfully mimicking the oppressors of their past. Their performance is one of the highlights of the festival and goes down very well with the audience. folklore, the wheel on a pole becomes a heavenly wheel, symbolizing the sun's motion and was believed to produce solar magic. The swinging of girls on Easter Day and St George's Day is still a widely observed custom to promote health and well-being.
Though the festival has seven stages, many performers are ejected from the rigorous selection process. But that doesn't stop the many impromptu performances taking place. These huge goatskin pipes, called guiders, are from the Rhodok region and are renowned for their deep drone. This girl has the difficult task of sharing the stage with a group of boys called the Hundred Guiders. The girls from Maria's village are only allowed to perform on stage for one minute due to an overrun in the program. They're now dancing to one of many gypsy bands whose music originates in Turkey and usually features virtuoso performances on the zurna, the Turkish oboe. Women played an important role in helping to overthrow Turkish rule in the 19th century and are honoured in more recent folk songs. Large female vocal groups are perhaps the most common Bulgarian music export. Many of the country's professional performers were originally selected by talent scouts at the festival. But for everyone on stage here, the chance to celebrate their songs and customs is in itself a great privilege. Oh, no, 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 no. 
The fire dancing ritual usually takes place as part of the celebrations of a feast day. It came to the Balkans from Asia, but by the 1960s it had only survived in one village in the southeastern Strandia region. Since then it has been revived in many areas and is now a popular tourist attraction. The purifying powers of the fire represent the cleaning and sweeping away of the winter and are a magic sign providing protection for the villagers as the balance is restored. The acknowledged source of this power has changed over the centuries. Though its origins are pagan, today the Orthodox Christian icons St. Constantine and St. Helena have come to symbolize the supernatural power required to resist the pain of the burning hot coals. Spiritual intervention or mind over matter, it's an irresistible nighttime spectacle. Baba Vitka is the oldest surviving performer from the village of Dolna Sekirna, where she has lived all her life. She still grows her own vegetables. It's a difficult life, but when she has no intention of giving up. Every day she still goes down to work in the fields outside the village. Hey, Mara, more 
את נונה בלילו. Baba Vitka sings in the oldest dissonant style, originating in Thrace. In classical times, the vocal purity of such singers was considered the finest. After one last rehearsal, she'll be ready for Koplivstitze. The group have been selected to perform one song at the festival. Baba Vitka will also perform solo. The festival program is now running many hours behind schedule. The competition judges left as darkness fell, and since there is no stage lighting, the only way the remaining performers can take the stage is by the light of the remaining trucks and coaches. Baba Vitka has been waiting to sing since mid-afternoon, but is still loving every minute of it. She hardly seems to have noticed the delay. This could well be her last time on stage at Koptischtitze. Oh, I stand on the 
During Baba Vitka's life, she has kept her music alive through times of great upheaval and change. One of the challenges her tradition faces now lies not far away on the Black Sea coast. Since the fall of communism, foreign tourists have been filling up the hotels here, attracted by an enticing package of low-priced sea and sunshine. But these visitors will see very little of the real Bulgaria. I think it's over commercialised, no, it's, it's, very, it's very nice, it's very relaxed, people are very friendly. I mean like last night we were like being in a working men's club except in a bar, you had bingo, oh. raffle, stuff like that, a bit of karaoke. Uh, Monday night it was like a mix and mingle thing, everybody was just come dancing, a uh, bit of music, bit of a quiz, so everybody gets to know everybody else, you know. Obviously, you all sit going down. Going bouncy boxing on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, we organise things like that to English pub. Uh, they have a reps cabaret, which we're going to tonight. I heard it was coming into fashion, like Cyprus and Turkey have done over the last sort of like four or five years. So we thought we'd get there before the tourism ruined it. So, didn't we? Yeah. A few miles away, tourists are on a day trip to ancient Nesaba. They're having perhaps their first glimpse of Bulgarian culture, watching a young piper on the ruined walls. On the streets nearby, an older woman is selling her traditional lace. She's offering embroidery that involved days of skilled work as cheap souvenirs for the tourists. We can sense that they're in the middle of change and trying to get their feet. You can sense that with them, especially in the older people. You know, a lot of them, a lot of the young people are only coming in to work, maybe everybody, but a lot of the older people that have been around, you can sense that maybe they don't even like the change, you know, they're kind of afraid of it or something. It's very commercial on Sunny Beach here, resort. I suppose if you go outside of this resort now, you'll see the real Bulgaria. Like we, we saw a lot of, when we were coming in on the bus. What, what I was expecting to be here was, was outside, like 10 miles down the road. And when we got in here then, as, like we said, when we got here, it was just like Butlins, a big holiday camp, you know. But despite the attractions of modern life, the living folk culture and traditions which continue to bind these diverse communities together still hold real meaning for a new generation. Here in Bulgaria, a unique and rich cultural identity has been carved out in Europe's history, surviving suppression under Christianity, the Turkish yoke and communism.
watching these proud and resilient people share a little of their secret with the world outside, you begin to wonder, what next for the young people of Bulgaria, gazing uncertainly towards a modern Western world that seems strangely to be looking back towards them? <laughs>